Hey all, Flame here, and we're getting quite close to the end of 2015 now. Like, it's just a few more hours to go and then we'll be into the new year. And this year actually feels like it's gone fairly quickly to a degree. Like, I know that's something people say about every new year, like all the time, to the point where us as a species should probably work out how long a year actually takes. But, you know, I'm waffling on now. I should say this video is going to be a lot more off the cuff winging it than the end of year one last year and that's primarily because I had a take of this down but the audio decided to bugger up so now I'm just gonna sort of wing it but let's go into it so the playthroughs we've done this year first up was Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and Rise of Lyric as a playthrough I don't really think too highly of it to be honest like it's an okay run there's some parts of it that are pretty good, I think, but it suffered a lot from the case of awkwardness. I really underestimated just how boring some parts of that game would be. And when a game's boring, you got you don't have as much to talk about. So there'll be parts where we're running out of things to say, especially like towards the middle and later on and then someone will just bring something up out of the blue and I find that really off-putting in playthroughs you know when there's gameplay of one thing going and the people are like just talking about something else that has nothing to do with it I really don't like that in playthroughs and that's why I find it really awkward to watch that back it's just something that I personally find uncomfortable and I think it goes against the point of a playthrough so that's just something to avoid for future I think more than anything Next up was the second Smash Brothers Versus series. And we did the first series of this in December 2014. And in the first series we played like how I normally play Smash Brothers with no items on. And that was an experimental thing shortly after the game came out or at least shortly after we all started playing it. The second session in January was with items on and it was a different way of playing for me. I came off as a complete fucking scrub, like as I usually do when I play Smash admittedly. I'm horrible at Smash, especially if you've seen my fuck up in the Nintendo phone, but that's a different story. But we had a few fun moments in that second session, and I remember particularly using the Mega Man Final Smash. That was a lot of fun, and I quite like how that session came out. It's, sometimes it's fun just to have the four of us play, just playing games for the fuck of it, and we decided to record it, and it worked. So, yeah, I quite like the Smash Brothers Versus. Next up is Mega Man The Wily Wars, and this, I quite like how it came out. Like, considering it was, like, my first solo run for a very long time, I think, like, the last time I did a serious solo playthrough or, or attempted to do a serious solo playthrough was way back in 2012, I want to say. So to go back to this, it was originally just a bit of filler, but I ended up quite liking how it was going. There were a few moments that I think held it back for me, though. I would say some of the pickups where I had to redo things weren't exactly put in smoothly and some of them are quite obvious and also in terms of the gameplay for the Mega Man 1 portion because this was before I decided that I want all future playthroughs on Flames World to be no death runs and so there were a couple of deaths in I think part 3 and that kind of makes it feel incomplete to me like it makes it feel broken but other than that, once you get into Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3 and the Wily Tower, I quite like how that playthrough came out overall. The next playthrough that was started was Pokemon Crystal and I'll be going more into why that's been as delayed as it is once we've finished the main run through. But the stuff that is there, I think commentary wise, pretty good actually. Like, I quite like a bit of the dynamic going on there. I think Pokemon playthroughs are a strength of ours when they work and that's because we all know quite a bit about Pokemon and we've all been invested in the series for quite a long time so we have quite a bit more to talk about like if we're not explicitly talking about the game on screen or the battles on screen or whatever we'll at least have Pokemon related things to draw from so it's still all on topic and I think that that really works in our favour technically not so much 
I had quite a few recording problems earlier on in the playthrough. Like probably about halfway through the stuff that's there already, you might notice some black screens just keep popping up. Like just random frames will just be replaced with black. And that was a problem with my recording setup that I it took me forever to actually identify what was causing the problem. And to tell the truth, that did cause me quite a lot of stress just trying to deal with that. And that's one of the things that delayed it, like the mid delay, like this is fucking awful. The fact that I'm having to address so many delays, but that was one of the things that held it back for me and where I don't really like watching certain parts back. It's just like a black frame flickering up, like that's just distracting to me. I don't like it, but overall how Crystal's going so far, I think it's going pretty well. I guess I might as well mention Sonic Ninja Motorbike. That was just a silly thing I decided to do for April Fools. It was a browser game that I found on Congregate. I, it caught my attention because they spelt the word motorbike wrong and I just rolled with it. Thought, you know what? Can't do any harm. <laughs> Let's just make a silly little video on it. Like It's nothing special, but it did the job. The next thing on my list is another miscellaneous video and that's the Injustice Versus video of Chris and Joey playing Injustice Gods Among Us. And to me, I think there were a couple of things that bother me about it personally. And that's one that I really did not present myself well at all. I'm not a very good co-commentator in that kind of situation. There's a reason why I've always tended to handle the gameplay for certain things. And also another reason why I don't tend to do much live stuff when other people are around. I just kind of get a little bit uncomfortable, get a little bit nervous about how it's going and things like that. And you can tell me awkwardly bringing things up and doing that nervous giggle sometimes that it detracts away from what's what we're meant to be watching. And so there's that. And the other thing is it's a fighting game. There's a lot of controller clacking and, you know, just like... It's really not worth it in commentary, if you can't tell. <laughs> like, and so me trying to balance that out when I'm editing it together, it was a lot of headaches. I need to keep it. I can't just cut it out randomly because then it will be distracting. But I also don't want the whole thing to just be clacking. So that was a nightmare to try and balance. I think it brought something interesting to the channel in that it wasn't just me playing. Like... It was just letting Joe and Chris take the front centre, which I think that was the right game for them because they have much more experience with Injustice than I do. And I don't think Steven's played it that much either. So it worked in that department. I just kind of wish I was able to present myself a bit better in those kinds of situations. And because of that, I think in future it, we might have to just like stick to stuff that I can just take the lead on because... I need to then coordinate what's being recorded with how I'm going to edit it later. I just think it works better that way, even if it does slightly limit us a little bit. After this was our coverage of the Mario Kart 8 DLC Pack 2. We did the first DLC pack, I think, right at the end of last year. This year we did what I refer to as parts 3 and 4 of the Mario Kart 8 DLC, which the commentary was good enough I think like nothing really special but nothing bad either there was that I think it was the second part where we just kept rambling on for ages afterwards and I just sort of left it in for the hell of it but like there's really not much to talk about for the second DLC pack so moving on now this next one was kind of a filler thing really because we didn't have any content at the time but it's the Mario Kart 8 200cc playthrough that I did as a solo live thing. And this was something else that I haven't done in a very long time. I haven't done well ever up until this point. And that's a solo live playthrough. Because at one point I was considering doing like a 200cc showcase as like a another post commentary thing with the others, you know, just a little showcase, like pick a few tracks, play through them and then talk over it. and. I just sort of thought that that wouldn't really show off 200cc properly. Like you wouldn't really get the appreciation for it when it's done in that way. So I just decided, you know what, sod it. Let's just play through this. I can do it live, show them like warts and all. 
And it, strangely enough, given how fast I was driving in those tracks, it seemed like one of the more chill playthroughs to watch back. I'm not quite sure how that works, like driving at 200cc. Yeah, that's pretty calm, pretty relaxing. But yeah, it's got its own flavour to it. And I quite like it overall. Now, this next playthrough I'm going to bring up has pretty much been my baby this year. And that is Beyond Two Souls. Now, this playthrough has had more planning go into it than any other playthrough I've ever done. It had a lot more sort of fiddling around, getting things right. And it's very rare that I say this, but this is something I've done that I'm actually quite proud of. That it all came together how I wanted it to. And that, the fact that I've came to like it so much really has taken me by surprise. Because when I first started recording the game, I was only ever planning to just do a non-commentary run of it. I was still in the mindset of how our other playthroughs go, like our usual commentary style that we do on the channel, or whether that be my own solo runs, or whether that be the playthroughs with the others commentating with me. So I wasn't really sure how I'd go about commentating over Beyond Two Souls. But once I sat down, thought about it, decided that I'd need to find a way to balance how much is me talking versus how much is the game talking. It sort of came together. There were a couple of parts that I found took a lot of work, like the Navajo part in particular. That took me about two weeks to just get down a run of the commentary that I was happy with. Like I kept just tweaking bits because naturally, you know, if it's a long part and... If it's not up to scratch, people aren't going to want to sit and watch that shit. So uh, I still made one mistake where I referred to the coffee as tea. But, you know, I can't be perfect all the time or at all. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I, I'm rambling now. But, yeah, I do really like Beyond Two Souls. And I'm glad I went for it and did that because that's just a playthrough that I think, for me personally, it's going to be one of the best ones I do. And, yeah. Beyond Two Souls, I'm happy with it. To wrap up this segment is what is unfortunately, in my opinion, the weakest of the 2015 playthroughs, and that is Mega Man 7. And the reason I say it's the weakest is it was pretty much the boom problem amplified of there's really not much to talk about here. Because Mega Man 7, unlike the earlier games, Seven drags. Seven drags a lot. That's why, like, even though there's actually less actual new levels, like, it, it, all the parts were a lot longer and it just it didn't work, I don't think. And it, it's something that I don't think our format, when all of us are doing it as a group commentary, works for. Because last year, Mega Man 6, I'll say, is probably one of my favourite commentaries we've ever done as a group. And that worked just because I don't know whether it was just a particularly good day or a good recording session, but whatever worked then didn't work for seven. And I might have to rethink how we go about future ones. I'll have a talk with the others whenever I finally get around to playing eight. But yeah, it's something to think about. It, I, I tried to clean up Mega Man 7 a lot in post. Like during the awkward sections, I'll just cut bits out and and put new opinions in, but it just didn't cut it, I don't think. Like, it's like, it's not a great playthrough, to be frank. So those were the playthroughs that we did in 2015. What I want to briefly talk about is how we did these playthroughs in 2015, like why that is and why it's likely to continue that way. And that's in regards to my solo playthroughs being a bit more prominent and generally taking over a bit and that's mainly because I find our format of the group commentaries only works for certain games like it works really well for Pokemon it works fairly well for Sonic but whether it would work for some of the other stuff I've done like say Beyond Two Souls like Beyond Two Souls would not work in that format like that's the kind of game that needed that bit more research bit more organization planning and much harsher editing and that option just isn't available particularly in terms of editing things more cohesively when 
we've done a group commentary because the way we record our group stuff, we all meet up together in one place and just record there, which I think that helps the dynamic for the stuff that it works with. But it also means that I can't edit as much as I would like to. I can't make it as smooth. Like if people talk over each other, I've just got to suck it up and live with it. Which, while I can cope with that for certain things like Pokemon, Sonic, stuff like that, I can deal with it being a bit more casual, a bit more laid back. For Beyond Two Souls, I think that kind of stuff just would ruin it. Like It just wouldn't be the same. It'd take you really out of the experience if you got more informal chatter over it. So that's why I kind of went the route I did, and that's why I plan to keep going that route for the games where I think it needs it, or at least more complex games as well where I might need to go more in depth about things. It's going to be a case by case basis as to what format I think is appropriate and it'll also be what games the other guys want to talk about because I think part of what hurt Mega Man 7 was that the other guys hadn't played it and they're not quite as big on Mega Man as I am so me making them sit through a Mega Man commentary when they've already done loads of them and it's not really their thing to start with that's probably hurt that quite a bit so it'll be a case by case basis we'll see what happens in that respect and next up is where I talk about delays or more specifically what causes a lot of the delays that being my mental health because I don't talk about this much on the channel and I know this is gonna kind of bring down the tone of this video a little bit, but I do deal with some quite bad anxiety and I deal with some quite bad depression. And this, in the past, I've been able to push through it. Like in 2014, like most of the playthroughs there, like they just went through, they happened. And even though I did have me moments of feeling down, I still managed to get on with stuff. This year hasn't gone quite so smoothly for a couple of reasons. One was I actually had some physical health treatment in August. So I had to have some treatment on my feet and for a while I wasn't able to walk. That really left me feeling really low. Like throughout summer I was just really not with it at all. And you can probably imagine trying to get things recorded or even just make arrangements to meet up with the others and get some videos done it just it kind of fell aside it like well I was too busy just trying to get by and even after I recovered like I'm I'm back to normal now like I can walk around properly I can do pretty much everything but I, I, it kind of took me right out of things and to tell the truth I haven't really recovered mentally about that it's just I I have my moments of trying to do something I try to get a video recorded it, it doesn't work and normally after like five or six times of redoing it it like I just think no I can't do this now and I have to put it off and put it off and that's why some of the Beyond Two Souls videos got delayed like the extra videos and just little things like that that I really wish weren't blocks but they are part of what I was talking about earlier on about not having as much freedom to edit things to how I like them with the group stuff is truthfully part of why Crystal has been delayed so much because it takes a lot out of me to make those kind of arrangements to get it edited down to how I want it and even like this is going to probably sound quite pathetic really but as much as I absolutely love those guys, like Chris, Stephen and Joey, they're some of my best friends. And like, I still find it hard to make the arrangements to have social contact in general. Like, sometimes I just have days where I can't bring myself to have any sort of social interaction or anything. Like, uh, And that's why Christmas is usually pretty hard for me. So uh, I'm like fighting against all these things and... I know that most of the time when your motivation is gone, and this is a life lesson I've learned for, that applies to most things, motivation is a fickle mistress. You can't just sit and wait around for her. You have to use your own discipline to break through that. But the problem there when you're working with something creative, and I know I use the term creative very liberally in terms of let's play, but when you've 
got to do something that you need to be involved in. If you're doing a let's play and you're not up to snuff, it shows. Like if you're trying to commentate over something and you're not with it, the commentary sounds dull. And I've had to scrap recordings because of that before, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to just keep scrapping stuff. So it's. I'm going to try and push through as much as I can next year. I'll do as much as I can to try and break through. I All I can say is I am incredibly grateful for everyone's patience. That's you guys watching, subscribers. That's Chris, Joey, Stephen, who've put up with me being all over the place as to whether I want to do stuff or whether I don't. Like, they put up with a lot of bullshit from me because of how I tend to be feeling, and I can only show my gratitude for that. I'm so thankful for everyone who's been supportive of me when I'm having my moments and yeah that's pretty much all I really wanted to cover in that respect I don't really like dwelling on this kind of stuff too much because I know it's not the most pleasant thing to talk about but I think I kind of owe it to you guys as subscribers to know why this release schedule on the channels all over the place and I'll do my best to try and find, if not solutions, at least workarounds next year. But it's still a little bit up in the air. And ultimately, the reason why I keep on doing this, I just really, really like the Let's Play format. I like being able to put across my thoughts on games that I play. And it's always satisfying to have a completed video that I like. And so I'll just keep on doing this for as long as I feel I've got it in me. One last thing I would like to address before I sign off properly are the Hellfire comms runs I've been in this year, which are Splatoon, Super Mario Maker and Sonic Heroes. These have quite a different format to the sort of stuff I usually do on my channel and honestly in the latter half of this year it's been really refreshing to do something a little bit different with the HFC crew, whether that be with Tom and Volk in... Splatoon and Super Mario Maker, or whether that be with Smoothies and Sky in Sonic Heroes. So it's just been a nice change of pace to do that sort of stuff, and hopefully I can do more stuff over on there next year. We'll see what happens there. So yeah, that was my awkwardly put together ramble about 2015. I'm terrible at sign-offs, so before I leave, I just want to say thank you for everything this year, folks, and... Hope you all have a happy new year. Bye-bye for now.